In this video, you will see a microsurgical endodontic procedure by Dr. Arnaldo Castellucci from Italy on a lower right second premolar with a very large cystic lesion. That lesion is removed to have access to the root apex, then with the use of ultrasonic retropreparation, retrofill with MTA, and no use of a bone graft or a membrane, simply precise and meticulous technique. But first, Let's hear it from Dr. Castellucci. Hi everybody, this is Dr. Arnaldo Castellucci. I am an endodontist from Florence, Italy, with a practice visit to endodontics about 43 years ago. And I'm happy to uh, share with you my experience showing a um, surgical procedure that I treated uh, about three years ago on a lower premolar having a big uh, cystic lesion right on top on the mental nerve. I did the surgery, I didn't use any uh, bone graft I didn't use any collagen membrane. I removed the suture after 48 hours, and I am happy to show you the nice healing after three years, documented with the bidimensional uh, radiograph and also with the CBCT. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you, and bye-bye. In this video, you're going to see Dr. Castellucci performing a beautiful endodontic surgery on a lower premolar with a very large lesion. Now, this tooth had a history of uh, a poorly done root canal. It actually caused paresthesia for this patient. Root canal was retreated by a friend of Dr. Castellucci and the paresthesia went away, but the lesion did not heal. And this is when this patient was referred to Dr. Castellucci. Now, this is the two-dimensional radiograph. Now, when you look at the 3D rendering, you can see a lesion that looks like it's through and through, but the, the 3D rendering doesn't always give you the true clinical presentation. So you need to look at the different sections. And although it's quite large and it looks very uh, invasive, you can see that the lesion itself, as big as it is, it's still not through and through. Uh, there's a very thin cortical bone both on the buccal and the lingual hence Dr. Castellucci will have to go through this uh, thin layer to access this big cystic lesion and perform the treatment. So you can see that this uh, treated premolar is a tiny bit rotated. Uh, the goal here is to gain access to the cyst from the buckle which is obviously more accessible and we're seeing that probing is being done to ensure that there's good periodontal attachment on the treated tooth and also on the adjacent teeth. And the procedure starts with an incision in the attached gingiva coronal to the mucogingival junction. This incision is called a sub-marginal incision to avoid recession and other periodontal compromise to the teeth. It's done in the attached tissue, so it's going to be easier to suture and therefore you're going to have faster healing. It starts from the distal line angle of the treated tooth. It's progressing from distal to mesial, which is a very important surgical principle. A mesial vertical releasing incision is then made. The incision is then repeated in a mesial to distal direction. Basically, we are following our footsteps, and this is to confirm that the incision is definitive to bone, to the bone level, and this will also facilitate the flap reflection. Now, Dr. Castellucci is also adding a small vertical releasing incision, and after that, he's reflecting the flap in full thickness. So pay attention to the very gentle, careful, precise flap reflection. of the cyst is identified clinically 
we have some information from the two-dimensional images and from the CT scan. And then he's using a round carbide burr to remove the cyst wall. So first, axis is identified and bone is removed to reach the cyst. And you can see a dark hue to locate that cyst. It's very similar to finding the sinus when you're doing a lateral sinus lift. Uh, the window size is increased using the same burr. The cyst is then removed using cotton pliers. And through this window, a root bevel is created uh, using a Lindman burr. And he uses it to shave the root apex right at the tip of the root and he keeps going until the canal appears exactly in the center of the bevel. This is followed by ultrasonic retro preparation and the tip that he's using here is made by Spartan and he's clearing the material from the root canal for a minimum of three millimeters. Then a micromirror is used to check the retro cavity. The plugger is fitted to the retro cavity and the same plugger is later going to be used for the retrofill. Next, a cotton pellet with local anesthetic and epinephrine is used for hemostasis. For this surgery, a one in 50,000 epinephrine is used. The pellet is left there during the retrofill for hemostasis. It's very effective. Then he's using the MAP system, the microapical placement system, to carry the MTA into the retrofill. It's applied to the retro cavity, and a microsurgical plugger is used to condense the MTA. Additional MTA is being delivered, further plugging is applied with a plugger, and the process is repeated a few times as needed. To flatten the MTA, Dr. Castellucci is using a microsurgical spatula. finished with an instrument that is similar to an Orban knife. Once this process is completed, the cotton pellet is removed the bony crypt is irrigated with sterile saline and it's irrigated thoroughly in all aspects of the crypt. While the space is filling up with blood, which is very critical for the healing of the defect. Now, Dr. Castellucci is calling this blood his bone graft because he doesn't believe that a bone graft or a membrane are needed if the infection is removed and if the retrofill is done in a meticulous way. So this is a very important point that he's going to be teaching us at the upcoming Endo Summit on Endodontic Surgery Mastery. You can see the healing after 15 days. Soft tissue healing is perfect with no recession or any other periodontal problems. There's a post-op x-ray, a two-year CT scan recall with the 3D rendering showing the fill 
The bone field is also seen on the CBCT and then a radiograph after two years is showing a beautiful bone fill. And then a three-year CBCT recall image shows fill as well, complete fill and with no bone graft that was done. So this is pure healing after a meticulous and precise endodontic surgery procedure. You can see in the buccolingual section the fill as well and at three years a full bony regeneration. Incredible work by Dr. Castellucci. He is the author of Microsurgical Endodontics and will also be one of the speakers in the upcoming Beverly Hills Endo Summit on endodontic surgery mastery where he'll be presenting on the topic of bone grafting in endodontic surgery and whether apical surgery can be successful without a bone graft. We'll have a few of Dr. Castellucci's books as part of the raffle in the upcoming Endo Summit on Endodontic Surgery Mastery where expert speakers, both clinicians and academicians, will unlock for you the secrets of endodontic surgery so you can grow your skills, expand your services, and better serve your patients. To sign up for the summit, go to endosummit.net. We're looking forward to seeing you there to learn and master endodontic surgery.